Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, reveal yourself to us, your majesty, your mystery, and yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, three persons, all-powerful, love, justice, mercy, truth. Heavenly Father, you alone are holy. Bring us again to Jesus, our holiness, righteous and clean in him, in whose majestic and glorious name we pray to you, Father, in and through the power of and enlightening of the Spirit, one God in three, world without end. Amen. There is something that secularists or atheists, people who belong to sects, Many from other religions, particularly Islam, have in common. And that is to dismiss the Christian faith and even ridicule it because of the Trinity. It is irrational, many would say. And dismiss the faith without a hearing. Some of you may have heard me speak along these lines before. It won't hurt to have this reinforced and to have it streamed and on record for further distribution because it's such an important and foundational area. Is the Trinity rational? I'm going to say yes, but let's, let's just take a moment to get there. I had a little bit of fun doing this in preparation, searching. Is the universe infinite? Is space infinite? If not, what is beyond it? There are various theories, but there is no definitive answer. Ultimately, the universe and space remain mysteries. This doesn't dismiss the universe or that the universe is reasonable in many ways. We can see the order in it. We can see something of the laws that govern it. But there are things about the universe that are beyond understanding. We enjoy the universe. We look at its stars, the heavens. When I look at the heavens, I'm filled with wonder. How majestic are you, O oh God? Yet, there are aspects of it beyond our understanding. Our earth is a part of our universe and we use it too. We breathe its air and we grow food in its soil. Our universe is present, it is real, it has order to it and reason, yet there are many aspects of it beyond our limited understanding. When we get to our text, to Psalm 8, we see these verses. The psalmist says, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? God is so huge, incredibly huge, huge. 
for this universe, and as vast as it is, is but the works of his fingers. God is rational. The Trinity is rational. It is just that it is beyond our limited understanding. Just like the universe, it's real, it's there, but it is beyond our ability to comprehend it. But God has made himself known. There's another way of knowing other than reason. It is faith given by the Holy Spirit, revealed and based on God's revelation of himself in the Word. And so when we pray to God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we, might, we will never comprehend this with our mind. Yet God, through his Word and Spirit makes this a reality. So when the Christian praises or prays to the Father or the Son or the Holy Spirit, informed by the Word, we know that we are praying to or praising the one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, the great Shema from the Old Testament. Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Yet the Father we know is God. The Son reveals Himself as God, is worshipped as God and accepts it. And the Holy Spirit, St. Paul says, but the Lord is the Spirit. And in the book of Revelation, John shows us that vision of the throne with the Father on it, with the Son, and the Holy Spirit surrounding them. And then the angels and humanity, the redeemed and all living creatures further out, focusing on the one God enthroned, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God in three persons. The Father is not the Son or the Spirit. And we can say that for each person on the Trinity. Yet the Father is in the Son and in the Spirit. The Spirit is in the Son and in the Father. And the same with the Son. One God, yet three. Not different gods. One, yet three. Not irrational, just beyond our limited understanding. Then if God is so huge, so awesome... Why does he regard us? Why does he care for us? Again, this is not to be fully comprehended through our reason, but to fall on our knees in awe before the one who made and reveals and controls everything and say, my Lord and my God, An awesome wonder how great you are, how great thou art. Something of this was captured by a famous naturalist or conservationist, uh, animal and marine scientist who was good friends with US President Teddy Roosevelt early last century. Uh, at Sagamore Hill, after an evening talk, the two would go out on the lawn and search the skies for a certain spot of star-like light near the lower left-hand corner of the great square of Pegasus. Then Roosevelt would recite the following. That is a spiral galaxy in Andromeda, It is as large as our Milky Way. It is one of a hundred million galaxies. It consists of 100 billion suns, each larger than our sun. Then Roosevelt would grin and say, Now I think we are small enough. Let's go to bed. 
How vast is the heavens, the universe, the skies, its multiple galaxies, its billions upon billions of suns shining like stars, many only visible with powerful microscopes, and what is even beyond that? Who knows? Our text also says these words. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained a praise. One of the most powerful men in the world, Teddy Roosevelt, could say, are we small enough? It's a question we need to ask. Are we small enough to humble ourselves and acknowledge the vastness of God, our smallness. And as Jesus says, unless you become like a child, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Through childlike faith, not childish, childlike faith, we can acknowledge the majesty of God, His revelation of Himself, and through the Spirit, know God as Father Son and Holy Spirit and He cares for us. And Jesus says, I will be with you always to the very end of the age. What assurance. Even if things darken, this majestic, huge God is on His throne. He cares for us. I encourage you, continue in faith to do good, to trust in God, to come back to this, His Word, again and again, to recall His promises, I'll be with you to the end of the age, of how huge He is, yet how much He cares for us, that in Christ, He becomes one of us, draws near to us, taking on our flesh, to draw us into His divine life, the divine life of the triune God, and it's Unity and love and order. And so we can praise Him. Coming as children, receiving His Word by His Spirit, knowing in a different way, reason is good for understanding some of the world around about us. It has its place in many aspects of life. But when it comes to faith, we come through the Word by the Spirit, in faith, different ways of knowing. God's book of creation to be unraveled and understood in many ways through our reason, although even God's light sheds, God's Word sheds light on that, but through the knowledge of God, it is through faith. Augustine brought this home through a story that is widely told. He was walking along the beach one day, contemplating the Trinity and how could this be? And as he was walking along, he saw a little girl who'd made a pond, and with a little wee pail or bucket, she was scooping water out of the ocean into her little sand pit or hole she had made. And he says to her, what are you doing? And she says, oh, I'm trying to put the ocean into my pond. He thought to himself, well, that's rather foolish, it's impossible. And then it dawned on him. The similarity. God, vaster than the ocean, was trying to, he was trying to pour that into his little pond-like mind. Yes, this girl could experience the ocean. She could enjoy it. But we can't harness it. We are to receive God by faith, through the Word. God is not irrational, just beyond our limited reasoning. How great Thou art, yet You care for me. You forgive me. You've written that our names through Jesus, through faith in Him, in the book of life. You've drawn us into your divine life. And one day faith 
will give way to sight. We only see in part now, St. Paul says, then we will see in full. One day the mystery will be fully revealed and we will have the capacity to understand so much. For now, we walk by faith and not by sight. And that walking is truly seeing. And it comes from truly believing. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.